Zorgamazoo by Robert Paul Weston, Chapter One. A Shadowy Form. Here is a story that's stranger than strange. Before we begin, you may want to arrange a blanket, a cushion, a comfortable seat, and maybe some cocoa and something to eat. I'll warn you, of course, before we commence, my story is eerie and full of suspense. Brimming with danger and narrow escapes and creatures of many remarkable shapes. Dragons and ogres and gorgons and more and creatures you've not even heard of before. And faraway places, there's plenty of those and menacing villains to tingle your toes. So ready your metal and steady your heart. It's time, time for my story's mysterious start. We begin in a subway under the ground where people in trains go rolling around in hurrying haste and in scurrying mobs, wandering off to their ponderous jobs. Much of the time they would linger in vain. They would stand in the station awaiting a train. They would push in between the ticket machines like fish huddled into a tin of sardines. They clutched at the purses and cases they brought, anxious and angry and overly wrought hoping a train would come barreling past, pick them up quick, and dash away fast. There was one little girl who waited as well, a girl by the name of Katrina Cottrell. While everyone else was busy or bored, this one little girl should not be ignored, for unlike the crowd, she was never inert. Her senses were sharp and awake and alert. She kept to herself, but she wasn't alone. She was joined by her guardian, Mrs. Crabone, who stood like Katrina clutching her hand, who stood with Katrina clutching her hand in the flickering light of the passenger stand. They were hunched near the tunnel of mortar and brick where the lighting was dim and shadows were thick. Where Katrina was curious, squinting her eyes, she could swear that a creature was shuffling by. At first it was vague, just a shadowy form, like a ship in a mist or the fog of a storm. So she gaped with a steady, unfaltering stare to determine for certain, was anything there? Yet, try as she might, the tunnel was black, obscuring the path of the train and the track. She nearly was ready to give up her search when the subway arrived in a lumbering lurch. It showered the station in glimmering light, and that's when she saw something scurry from sight. Hey, Crabby, she whispered, there's something I see. It's smaller than you, but it's bigger than me. It's loping around in the tunnel, I swear. It looked like a warthog or maybe a bear. Don't call me Crabby, spat Mrs. Crabone in a violent and rather vociferous tone. You're a fool and a fibber, the woman accused. Such ludicrous lying is never excused you see my good reader this had happened before since katrina cottrell well she loved to explore on her way home from school whenever she could she would cut through the park or a forested wood and more often than not in some part of the park where no one else went until after dark she would see something strange something utterly odd something hulking or hairy and possibly Claude, and then would run, she then would run home with a story to tell where Mrs. Crabone would do nothing but yell. Katrina, she'd holler, you ignorant thing, your brain must be made out of paper and string. All this rot about yetis and monsters in locks, they're nothing but lies, they're nothing but crocs. Old Crabby, you see, was a bit of a witch, in the pit of her heart was a serious glitch. She didn't have time for the fanciful things like pirates and gadgets and creatures and kings. She believed that a girl should be perfectly prim and shouldn't be guided by whimsy or whim. As such, she was sure, certain Katrina was nuts, too lively, too feisty, and too full of guts. Yet the two were related, yes, that much was true, but how they were linked, well, nobody knew. Their relation was distant, hard to define, yet connected somehow by a family by a family line, like a 40 first cousins, 10 times removed. The bloodline, however, had never been proved. 
And so once again, they had come to collide with each of them taking their opposite side as they stood near the tracks where, where under the ground, Katrina thought beasties were creeping around. But Krabby, she cried, it really is true. It looked like a thing that escaped from a zoo. But I'm not a dullard and I'm not a dunce, so you gotta believe me, if only this once. Mrs. Crabone said nothing at first. Her face went all flushed, as if ready to burst. Then her lips twisted up into sort of a grin, and she wrangled Katrina by ear and by chin. Leaning in close so Katrina could hear, she whispered maliciously into her ear, You listen to me. This lying must end. When we get home, here is what I intend. I will call up my friend, a lobotomy doc, a talented man at the butchery block. His scalpels are polished to shimmering shine. He'll slice from your eye to the top of your spine. He'll cut from your brow to the top of your head, your brain. He'll replace it with something instead, something quite nice like a pastry or cake, or why not a succulent caribou steak? Your original brain, he will lock in a box, for that's what they do, those lobotomy docks. Before the poor girl could swallow her fear, Mrs. Crabone gave a tug on her ear. So wreathing and wiggling and wincing in pain, Katrina was bullied inside of the train. The subway struck up with its clackety clacks, rolling into the tunnel and over the tracks. Katrina sat quietly watching the wall. It was smeared with graffiti and scandalous scrawl. She was searching the dark for the thing she had seen. What was it, she thought? What could it have been? At first, there was nothing that seemed out of place, but everything changed when she made out a face. It was surely a face she would never forget. It peered from the dark in an odd silhouette. It wasn't a hog or a bear or a cat, though perhaps if all three were stirred in a vat, muddled and mixed into something anew, a wildebeest polar bear antelope stew. There were horns on its head, all twisty and curled. They shot from its noggin. They spiraled and swirled. Its shoulders, however, were stocky and stout, and a thicket of whiskers hung down from its snout. But perhaps the most shocking, incredible sight she saw when the creature leaned into the light, not a soul would believe that it wasn't a lie, but this creature, this thing, it was wearing a tie. The train sped ahead and the shadows were back. The creature was lost in the Stingian black. It was gone in an instant, gone in a blink, but not before giving Katrina a wink. She turned to her guardian there at her side. She was certain the truth could not be denied. You see now, she said, you can't disagree. You looked out the very same window as me. A creature, a thing, it was just like I said. Perhaps there are more of them farther ahead. But Mrs. Crabone was severely irate. She spat when she spoke with fury and hate. A creature, she shrieked, a mysterious beast. You're crazy, Katrina, and that's saying the least. You listen to me, you insufferable brat. What you saw, it was probably only a rat. So I've had quite enough. You tell me no more. Your lies and your tales and your fibs I abhor. If you tell me again, I shall do it myself. I'll scoop out your brain for a spot on my shelf. But didn't you see it, his horns and his beard? And he winked, I believe, which was awfully weird. Mrs. Crabone made, made a shriek like a bell. Now you listen up. Miss Katrina Cottrell? I'm the boss around here. I'm your guardian, see? Why else would your parents have sent you to me? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they know what's best. That's why they made such a special request that I be the one to raise you upright so you'd learn to be quiet and nice and polite. So from now on, you pest, you'll not say a word. You'll say nothing silly or strange or absurd. You'll be a good girl and you'll do what I say. You'll shut off your mouth 
for the rest of the day. So Katrina was silent. She made not a sound, but her eyes remained actively darting around, watching the weave of the wandering track, examining close every cranny and crack. In search of the thing that had briefly appeared, all hairy with horns and a whiskery beard, a, be a creature, a beastie, a troll, or a gnome? But she saw nothing more all the way home. Dun, dun, dun.